I think the time has finally come to do the grand reveal of the Quacker Stacker. We've done a lot with this boat since the beginning of June when we first picked it up. It's been a lot of fun working on this project. You guys seem to have really enjoyed it. So please make sure to hit that thumbs up button for me on this video. And let's dive in here and take a look at this boat that I'm gonna be hunting out of this year. If you guys are tuning into this series for the first time, Welcome, glad to have you guys here. Make sure to go back and watch this whole series from the beginning so you can kind of get a better idea of what we got going on here. But this is the Momarsh Fatboy DP. It is a 13 foot layout boat. It's made out of fiberglass and it really is gonna fit my hunting style really well. The things that I like about this boat is that it's lightweight. It can hold a lot of gear. I can put a motor on it. The dog can hide in it and it's gonna be really easy to launch this in places that maybe the boat ramps are a little bit tricky to get to, or even getting it into motorless areas because along with it, having a motor, you can also paddle this thing. So it's very versatile, and I'm really, really, really excited to see what we can do with this in the future. So let's go ahead and dive on into this and give you all the juicy details about the Quacker Stacker. So as you guys can see behind me here, we've got the Quacker Stacker on the trailer. So about more towards the later end of the series, I did find a trailer to haul this boat with. Yes, it can fit in the bed of the truck, and originally when I bought this boat, I bought it with loading it in the bed of the truck in mind. So that's what made me choose the Momarsh over other options that are out there. I ended up getting the trailer. It needed a little bit of work. As you guys saw, we painted it, we redid the bunks, I did uh, repack the bearings, just didn't do it on video. We added the upper deck. So it's come a long ways from that uh, trailer that I came home with and now we're here and it actually looks like a legit layout boat trailer. So it's a single jet ski trailer and it's got bunks on the bottom, which is great for loading and unloading this boat. And I put this ladder rack on top here. So then in the future, if I have somebody else coming with me, we can load their boat on top, whether it's a kayak or another layout boat, or I don't know, that's probably the only options for hunting, but this could also double as a kayak trailer in the summer. If I want to take a kayaking trip with my wife or friends or something, we can just load our kayaks on here and head on down the road. The tires, they're actually in good shape. They're holding air really well. So that was a kind of a concern of mine when I bought the trailer is like, am I gonna have to replace the tires or are they gonna hold air? As far as I can tell, over the past month that I've been working on this trailer, I've been checking the tire pressure and it doesn't seem to lose any air pressure. So I think the tires are gonna be good. The tread looks fantastic. So I think the wheels are gonna be in good shape for this coming season. Up here, we added some reverse lights. So in that video, I had to kind of play around with this to try and get it perfect, but we got it. So I've got reverse lights hooked to the wiring of the trailer. And so here's what I did. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but I've got a waterproof switch right here that I tapped into the uh, tail light wire for, on the trailer. So it's gonna constantly draw power as long as the headlights are on, I believe. So it's going to run power from the truck you flip that switch, it's spliced in, so it's gonna still run the taillights and stuff. Once you flip the switch, the reverse lights come on. Also, we added some carpet on the edges of the ladder rack because what's happening is the boat is rubbing on this coming in and out of the trailer. So in the future, I'm kind of working on it right now, trying to figure it all out, but what I'm thinking about doing, and I think it's gonna work the best is Right here, I need to add like a piece of two or three inch square tubing so I can move this out another, if it was two inch, it'd be four inches wider. If it was three inch, it'd be six inches wider. I'd like to do six inches wider on the backside. The front's not really that big a deal because it doesn't, the wide part of the boat, which is the middle, it doesn't pass through there. So that's just kind of helping it in case it bumps in going in and out. So that'll kind of protect the fiberglass of the boat. but. The backside here definitely needs to be widened out so then we don't have future issues. So that's the trailer, guys. It was pretty basic. Just wanted to kind of refinish it and add a couple of things. One of my favorite things about the boat, uh, one of the favorite features that I added was definitely this HydroTurf on the floor. So the HydroTurf is like an EVA stick-on mat. It's super comfortable. It kind of dampens some sound and it gives the dog good traction when she's in there. So that's really, really probably one of my favorite features that we added to the boat. 
I also kind of forgot that we did add interior LED lights. I keep forgetting about that because I never turn them on because I'm never using the boat at night, but we added that. We got the 12 inch light bar. So when this boat is running on the water, if you guys didn't see the on the water test, at full throttle, the nose comes up, but when it's idling, it stays flat. So I think the light bar is really only gonna be useful when we're either idling or paddling. And if we're going full throttle somewhere, I'll probably have a spotlight in hand. It's kind of similar to what I do with the big boat anyways. So really not a big deal there. We got the nav light. I still need to figure out the, the uh, all around light for the back. Probably won't be too difficult. So those are some of the cool features that we added. And we also added the old transom on here for the mud motor. We did nav lights, light bar, interior LED lights, uh, hydro turf on the floors, and the transom and trailer. But let's get the boat off the trailer real quick and see what it's gonna be like when we're hunting out of it. So we got the cover on here. Now we just gotta put the stuff on the inside. We've got the seat for me. And then I also picked up one of these little kennel cots for Cora to stay on. Because in the back side here, the water will, it pools up uh, right where the dog sits. So I wanted to have something to get her up and off the floor and out of the water. So that'll kind of help her out and help her stay dry. But then I've also got the battery box. So this is gonna be powering all the lights in the boat as well as I've got a USB charger here and a cigarette outlet to uh, charge pretty much anything else I need while I'm out there hunting. So at this point, we've kind of gotten everything done that I wanted to get done for this boat. We've got lighting, we've got the motor, we've got all the interior pretty much ready to go. I didn't wanna go way overboard with it to have too much going on. I mean, I have to be able to hunt out of this thing. Like I could add tons of other cool features, but uh, I wanted to try and keep it very basic as far as uh, things for the inside here. I want to have as big of an open platform as I could because we're going to be stacking a bunch of decoys in here and actually hunting out of this thing and basically almost living out of it for a couple of months, which is going to be really exciting. So a couple of things that I do need to do still is grass in the blind, which we'll get to that. There's really no hurry. I don't need to hunt out of this thing until like September or October. And then a lot of you guys have been saying stuff about Gator Glide. And so I've been doing some thinking about that. I've thought about how it can help me. And I've also thought about how it can hurt me when I'm using this boat in the field. So um, Gator Glide's perks I guess is that it's going to make the boat easier to drag and it might protect the hole a little bit but some of the drawbacks are kind of steering me away from it like I thought I was going to do it I had it added to the cart but then I chose not to do it because I want to have some friction on the bottom of the boat I'm not trying to power this thing through a bunch of weeds to get to my spot all most of the time I'm getting to my spot through boat lanes or rivers or lakes or just open water in general so the gator glide wouldn't really necessarily be essential for me to hunt out of but the biggest drawback for me one is that when i usually get set up in my kayak i just kind of tuck the kayak into the weeds and use the friction of the weeds to hold my boat in place but with gator glide on here if that if i did that that wouldn't really be an option so I might still consider it in the future. Uh, I maybe get one season under my belt with it like this and then maybe consider it in the future, but I don't think it's gonna really be giving me everything that I need for the cost that it is. So I think I might opt out of the Gator Glide. But yeah, I'm pretty stoked about this. It's really comfortable. I think the blind's gonna work really well. Um, Cora's gonna hide back behind me when she's ready to hunt. So I'm actually really excited to hunt out of this boat. Um, like I said in previous videos, this has been a dream boat of mine for many, many years. 
I finally have it. I've built it to be the ultimate duck hunting rig. There's definitely things that could have been added to this boat, but I'm kind of choosing not to. I want to kind of keep it simple, like I said. But all we need to do now is basically grass it in and uh, see how we can kind of use it to hunt. I need to take it out and practice with it, loading decoys in it, taking it out to the spot, and really dial it in before hunting season gets here. So taking a look at the inside of this boat here real quick, you can see back here in Cora's little area, we've got the kennel cot. And I've also got my paddles stuck to, stuffed down in there on the sides. We've got the battery box, and then we've got all this space up front for activities and gear and things. We've also got stuff, we've got room back here to carry stuff. We'll have room up here to carry stuff. So it's gonna be a pretty sweet little rig. I know in a past video, I tested to see how many decoys we could feasibly fit in this thing, but I think we should do that again. Now that we have the cover on and we can kind of pour it out over the sides a little bit, and I kind of have an understanding of how I'm gonna be running this boat, I can figure out how many decoys I can fit. So let's get some decoys stacked up in there. First of all, I wanna get this set up like I would be driving it. Okay, so we'll do that. I haven't quite decided what we'll do with the kennel cop, but maybe, maybe it'll just slide right under my feet there. That way, that'll work really well, actually. That's, that's what we're gonna do. I sit on this when I'm running the boat, and so we'll have a little bit of space back here for maybe a bag, and we'll lay the gun down here underneath the seat. My plan is to have Cora here, and then this'll be all decoys. So let's grab some decoys. So here is a little bit over a dozen decoys. And I think what we're gonna have to do to get as many decoys in here as possible, we're gonna have to kind of slide them up and under and really kind of weasel them into place because we wanna make the most out of all the space that we have in this boat. And these are my big mallards. I mean, they're, you know, not really life-size mallards. They're a little bit oversized. So they're, they're fairly big, but I think that's a little bit over a dozen, maybe 13 or 14 decoys right there. So here we've got some gadwall and shovelers. Still not small, not big either. So those are decent sized decoy right there. So that brings us up to about two dozen. And of course, we cannot forget my personal favorite for this kind of situation. The, uh, the last pass mallards from FA. They're a little smaller, they're very packable, they're lightweight, and that's two dozen of them right there. So we're looking at about four dozen decoys piled up right there, which is a lot more than I would normally need. So that's a, that's a decent haul, but you know, going in at night, what we're gonna need to do is peel this cover back so then we can see with that light bar just like that. So I'll be running the boat like this. Cora, here. Load up. Good. So Cora will have her little spot right there. I'll be driving the boat. We'll get to our spot. And I think that's gonna work out really well. Like, like I said, this, this is a lot of decoys, but I really like these little last pass mallards for this type of situation. Kayaks, decoy sleds, you name it. They just, they work really well. <laughs> it's a perfect size decoy for this. It's a Cora size decoy, isn't that right? Yeah? Yeah, buddy. We did this boat just because of you. Otherwise I'd still be in a kayak. But that wasn't gonna happen now, was it? If I'm gonna be paddling, I'll probably just sit just like this and we can paddle. I might have to deal with the old dog being in my way a little bit, but yeah, we could paddle. Or Cora could come back here when we're paddling. Cora, there you go. Yep, and we can paddle along just like that. So the only thing I didn't get out for this video was the mud motor, but if you guys have kept up on the videos, you've probably seen it before. So this is probably gonna be more along the lines of what you'll see in most videos. Um, I'm planning to hunt a lot of motorless areas where I'm able to, you know, sometimes sometimes you're able to get there a back way and then portage into the motorless areas, which that's kind of my game plan at this point is to use the motor to get to the spot. And then where the motors aren't allowed, I'll take the motor off and paddle to where I'm gonna be hunting. So that is, 
That is the rig. That is the quacker stacker. This has been quite the project. It's been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot along the way. And if I was gonna do this again, I would have a better understanding of how to do this. So hopefully, if you guys are looking to do this to a layout boat, I help you guys out with uh, assembly and how I thought about things. And if you guys find this helpful, make sure to leave me a comment letting me know. But I think that's it for today. It's time to put the old quacker stacker back on the, on the trailer and wait for the grass to arrive so we can grass it in. I'll catch you guys on the next one.